1958 and early 1959 was a period of great activity in the entire Air Force ballistic missile program in research, in manufacturing, component testing, deployment, and the most visually impressive, flight testing. It was not a period of a few highlights, but rather of highlights succeeding highlights in an ever-increasing tempo. This brief film can deal with only a few of the vital tests which took place. Nineteen fifty eight was a year of extensive and intensive test activity in the Thor IRBM program, with launchings during the final quarter of the year achieving special significance as the operational Thor reached the flight test stage. A most significant launching in the program was the flight test of Thor missile one forty five. This was the first operationally configured missile launched from the operational launcher at the Air Force Missile Test Center, Cape Canaveral, Florida. Launch occurred on 5 December. Ignition and liftoff were normal following a satisfactory countdown. Only normal and superficial damage was caused to the launcher. Reentry vehicle separation was achieved and reentry was observed by at least one aircraft in the impact area. Preliminary evaluation of data coverage indicates excellent performance of all instrumentation systems. The successful launching of this operationally configured missile from the operational launcher constitutes a major milestone in the IRBM Thor program. At Vandenberg Air Force Base, California, construction of the Thor Intermediate Range Ballistic Missile Training Facility was initiated and, to a great extent, completed during 1958. Thor Missile 151, after undergoing all major subsystems tests, was delivered to Launch Pad 1, Complex 75-1, where it was subjected to a series of all systems tests and countdown exercises. IRBM Thor 151, the first missile to be launched from Vandenberg Air Force Base, blasted off the launch pad on 16 December 1958, officially opening Vandenberg Air Force Base as an active missile launching center less than two months after its dedication as a United States Air Force Pacific Missile Range test site. This flight test also heralded the Strategic Air Command's missile combat readiness. This was the first missile to be launched by a SAC crew. This operationally configured Thor was launched from operational launch equipment. Post-launch evaluation indicated there was no significant damage to the pad. All missile systems operated normally in every respect and the IRBM flight trajectory was successfully accomplished. This test, the culmination of an intense effort, demonstrated that the Thor missile, ground support equipment, and SAC trained crews could be coordinated to achieve a successful missile launching in an operational environment. Development of ICBM Titan has progressed to initiation of the missile flight test program supported by an assembly line production capability. At the Martin Company, Denver, missiles are coming off the production line in quantity to support a launch schedule of one missile a month during 1959, approximately two a month during 1960. Missile A-1, the first deliverable missile produced under the Titan contract, was accepted by the Air Force in June 1958. The first Titan captive firing with the A-1 missile took place at Martin, Denver on 29 August 1958. At the Air Force Missile Test Center on 22 January 1959, Missile A-3 was delivered for the first Titan launch. This was the second arrival of the A-3 missile at Cape Canaveral. A test attempt on 20 December 1958 aborted due to the failure of a liquid oxygen line and the missile had been returned to the Martin Denver factory for repair. Titan A-3 underwent a successful flight readiness firing on 29 January, within a week of its arrival at the test center. All requisites were met for flight test. 
The launch of Titan A3 took place on 6 February 1959. This was a limited range flight test for the purpose of evaluating under flight conditions the structural integrity of the Stage 1 airframe, the operation and compatibility of the propulsion and the propellant feed systems, and the capabilities of the flight control system. The missile consisted of an operational Stage 1, a dummy Stage 2, and a dummy nose cone with instrumented boom. It contained no guidance equipment. Countdown began at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. A total of four and a half hours of hold time was called, due primarily to weather considerations and replacement of instrumentation components. Missile launch occurred at 1621 hours Eastern Standard Time. After six seconds of hold down, the missile lifted off, rose vertically for approximately 20 seconds, then programmed to the desired pitch attitude. Engine burnout occurred as programmed at 121 seconds after liftoff. The missile followed the prescribed flight path to reach an apogee of more than 70 nautical miles, an impact in the broad ocean area at a ground range of approximately 205 nautical miles. The launch of Titan A3 successfully accomplished all primary and secondary objectives. All missile propulsion components performed satisfactorily. Engine compartment pressures and temperatures were as expected. Airframe vibrations were normal. The successful launch of missile A-3 is not only an important milestone in the development of ICBM Titan, but also represents a significant achievement in the total Air Force ballistic missile program. This is the first time that any missile at the Air Force Missile Test Center has been completely successful on its first flight. On 28 November 1958, the United States Air Force achieved the first completely successful full-range flight of an Atlas Intercontinental Ballistic Missile. Launched from the Missile Test Center, Cape Canaveral, Atlas 12B was the 15th Atlas missile to be flight tested. Test objective of the flight was to achieve a nominal range of 5,500 nautical miles. This objective was accomplished with all missile subsystems performing satisfactorily. The guidance system generated all discrete commands to the missile and data from three separate sources indicated that impact occurred at a point only 0.5 nautical miles to the left and 5.5 nautical miles long of the pre-selected target area. The flight of the 12B missile and its successful accomplishment of a flight of 5,500 nautical miles was a major achievement in the Atlas ICBM weapon system program. One of the best kept secrets in the annals of the ballistic missile program was the flight test objective of Atlas Missile 10B. No public release of information on the objectives was made until President Dwight D. Eisenhower announced that Atlas 10B was in satellite orbit, the largest American satellite to date. Missile launch occurred on 18 December 1958. Vernier, booster, and sustainer ignition and buildup were normal. Differing from other satellite launchings, the Atlas 10B was guided under power all the way into orbit. Atlas 10B, as a satellite, achieved a perigee of 98 nautical miles, an apogee of 795 nautical miles, within a period of 101 minutes. All of the flight test objectives were realized 100%. In a dramatic demonstration of the feasibility of utilizing an orbiting vehicle to relay messages, a pre-recorded Christmas message from President Eisenhower was beamed at the world from the Atlas. Subsequently, additional messages were relayed to and from the satellite. The successful launching and orbiting of Atlas 10B will undoubtedly be rated as one of the most significant milestones in the history of the development of America's space program. Also in December, Atlas 3C was prepared for launching. Atlas 3C was the first Series C flight missile. This Atlas was the first to incorporate lighter gauge propellant tanks and shifted intermediate bulkheads for better propellant utilization. Launched 23 December at 2345 hours Eastern Standard Time, Atlas 3C completed a very successful flight with a San Salvador impact predictor indicating impact at seven miles long and three miles to the right of the pre-selected target.
The Mod 3 guidance station, however, placed impact as within one half mile of the selected target. All preliminary information indicates that most of the flight test objectives for this missile were achieved. The successful launching and flight test of Atlas Missile 3C, the 17th Atlas missile to be launched, marked another step forward in the progress toward operational status of this intercontinental ballistic missile. The flight tests you have witnessed are only a few of those which were conducted within a period of a few short months, a span of time in which the calculated risk premise upon which the ballistic missile program was based was shown to be a valid one.